Hi, this is Shady, and today we're going to be discussing Lucha Canaria, the folk star wrestling by the natives or the indigenous people of the Canary Islands. So in this video, what we will do is discuss uh, briefly about the history, how it came to be into a sport and organized sport with a body of structure. Of course, the rules compare a few uh, throws with judo and you know when it comes to kumikata gripping etc all of that stuff and finally talk about a few uh, instances of you know lucha canaria stepping out of its comfort zone into mma and other grappling matches particularly talking about el guapo so uh, first let's talk briefly about the history so the history of it is uh, interesting in my opinion so the moment when Lucha Canaria was founded is really uh, uncertain, but after the Spanish conquest in 1420, this was when a man by the name of Alvar Garcia decided to really document the techniques, have them uh, as a folklore uh, practice. So for example, there's an instance uh, in 1527 where they organized a ceremonial match to celebrate the birth of Felipe the second I'll leave a link in the description below for you to read more about the history so in the 1870s this was when the first official rule set was established and then in the 1940s they tried to popularize it make it more accessible um, through many federations or body of structure and finally in 1984 it's when um, the Spanish Federation uh, of wrestling was founded and thus reuniting it under one body of structure kind of like IJF and IBJJF uh, so um, let's talk about the rules so the match starts with um, gripping as you see here um, you see this brilliant Ko Sotogari so it's a semi neutral grip I would say you have one grip on the short and the other can be either to block the leg as you saw uh, Juan Soto trying to do um, or it can be on the shirt or the other side of the shorts. Here you see a hopping Ko Sotogari from the grip. Uh, obviously they're bent down, so it's not gonna be as swift as someone from Shizentai, so you're gonna have to hop it through uh, judo high level because you know they know what the other is doing. Uh, many instances of Ko Sotogari, you would see them uh, hopping it uh, through it's not gonna be as swift as you see here in this demonstration and also judo has far more slack with the sleeve and the lapel so you can really control the upper body down cutting it down far more than you know when you're gripping the short and maybe gripping the shirt which actually you can do uh, with lucha canaria so this brilliant uh to gary by uh, loretto is great now here let's see another example here you see you have one grip on the short and the other is trying to block the leg from him to entering so here you see loretto faints with ko soto gake uh, baiting juan soto into an uchimata and then finally finishing him with uh, uchimata geishi this is something that um, actually my sensei talked to us uh, about a few days ago where people would initiate the Kosoto Gake in order to finish with Uchimata Geishi. Let's see it here. So he blocks his leg in order for him to step forward and then as he steps around he blocks with Kosoto Gake and then baiting Juan into a Uchimata and then finishing him by rotating his shoulder into Uchimata Geishi. Absolutely brilliant so here you see uh, he actually dropped him first with kosotogari and then with uchimata and geishi so the rules are is that uh, you have to drop anyone on the ground any part of their body beside the soles of their feet so kind of like sumo and you have to actually score twice for you to win so kind of like kendo two epons you get the win or the first one to score two times is the actual winner so here you see kosoto uh, gake as a base form you actually have to cut down and then block the leg and here you see uh, uchimata geishi so this is a match and here you see he goes for uchimata but when you rotate their shoulder to the other side is when they land on their back and that's one that's what loretto did to juan in order to get uh, the win so here you see it attacks in uchimata but the shoulders were rotated to the other 
uh, side. So uh, this is very interesting. They also can grab the legs. You can see knee picks, um, ankle picks, etc. But to make sure your, your your hand doesn't touch the ground. So finally, I want to talk about uh, El Guapo or Juan Espino. He's a very heavy and big uh, man. He is known for his Lucha Canaria. Uh, background he fought in the UFC and even fought Senegalese wrestlers or re lamb wrestlers which is uh, a video that I did um, that's uh, really blew up in popularity I was actually really surprised so um, here you see Espino actually fighting uh, Senegalese wrestlers and these are not weak or you know light men these are heavy strong men and yet he went out of his comfort zone fought them even went into the ufc and amateur fights and even fought in sambo uh, so you can actually see someone with a background of lucha canaria uh, well rounded himself with striking uh, ground technique and then you know he became a very successful fighter so here we see an instance of someone getting out of their comfort zone and doing you know these big sports like mma or fighting other grapplers like here you see in sambo so this is one of the i would say main uh, critique when you know talking about a particular grappling art is that where are they in mma or where are they in these particular competitions etc but here you see juan espino is a testament that um, you can have a base of Lucha Canaria or be a strong, you know, tough grappler and then going outside of your comfort zone or the Terrero, um, the, the circle where the Spanish wrestlers fight. It's between 15 and 17 diameters of sand and uh, beaten earth. So they call it Terrero, which is in French also terre or ground or earth simply. Uh, here you see him fighting Senegalese wrestlers on multiple occasions. The man is a tank. So uh, if you have anything else to add, please let me know down below. Also, uh, if you can add any more information about Lucha Canaria when it comes to the rules, the tradition or the folklore, um, please uh, feel free to do so in the comment section. Here you see also uh, polishing his ground and pound. So. Um, this is a very interesting grappling art in my opinion it should be discussed more um, it's kind of like those belt wrestling traditions like shirim or the wrestling in shima okinawa and many uh, others also please consider supporting me on patreon i have exclusive content for the patrons only and of course do not forget to check out josh simon's shop for t-shirts and I would say objective articles on jujitsu's history. This was Shadi, and as always, thank you for listening.